वेलकम टू मॉलिक्यूल हेलो फ्रेंड्स टुडे आई बी टॉकिंग अबाउट द रामाचंद्रन प्लॉट एंड व्हाई इज दिस प्लॉट इंपॉर्टेंट टू स्टार्ट विथ टुडेज टॉपिक रामाचंद्रन प्लॉट इज ए विजुअल डिस्क्रिप्शन ऑफ द कॉम्बिनेशन ऑफ फाइ एंड साई डाई हेडल एंगल्स दैट आर परमिटेड इन ए पेप्टाइड बैकबोन एंड दोज दैट आर नॉट परमिटेड ड्यू टू स्टेरिक रिस्ट्रिक्शन और स्टेरिक हिंड्रेंस but before discussing ramachandran plot in detail we need to know certain concepts which are important to understand ramachandran plot firstly what is the spatial arrangement of atoms secondly what is the steric hindrance thirdly what is the composition of an amino acid fourth what are the different types of amino acids that are involved in the formation of a peptide bond and fifth is how is a peptide bond formed and what are the dihedral angles so what is the spatial arrangement of atoms the arrangement of atoms in such a way that they are in a minimum repulsion state with each other is called as spatial arrangement of atoms this minimizes the steric hindrance or the repulsion between the two atoms and making the molecule stable what is the composition of an amino acid The amino acid is basically formed when a carboxyl terminal and an amino terminal is attached to the carbon atom with the hydrogen atom and the R atom which is the bulky group that gives different characters to the amino acid. So the amino terminal is the positive side of the amino acid and the carboxyl terminal is the negative side of the amino acid. So what is steric hindrance? A steric hindrance is the property of repulsion by the bulky groups. A steric hindrance is caused by bulkier groups creating an obstruction for the incoming reactant or the reactive radical. As discussed earlier, it has been stated that the atoms arrange themselves in such a way that they are in a minimum repulsion state. To understand steric hindrance, I will take a common example. I believe that most of my viewers may have travelled by the Indian railways. the lower berth is usually designed to accommodate four normal persons or four thin persons without touching each other that means that if we we ask four persons to sit on a berth they will sit in such a way that they will not be touching each other now let us relate the berth that accommodate four persons are the tetrabenzene of the carbon and those four persons as the atoms of the carbon atom we know that whenever a fat person will come he will take a space of two thin persons so in that case the space left for those three thin persons will be less and that will cause steric hindrance so that will cause repulsion the different types of amino acid which form the peptide bond has been shown in the slide which is not important right now to discuss what is the peptide bond formation and dihedral angles a dihedral angle is the angle at the intersection of the two planes and the peptide bond what is the peptide bond and how is it formed when two amino acids one from the carboxyl terminal and the other from the amino terminal combines to form a bond with expulsion of water it is known to form a peptide bond or an amide bond having a partially double bond character due to the partial negative charge being developed on the oxygen and the hydrogen atom having a partial positive charge due to the electronegativity of the nitrogen atom coming back to ramachandran plot ramachandran plot is basically to show the dihedral angles that have been formed by the peptide bond and the rotation the six atoms of the peptide bond lie in the same plane with the oxygen atom of the carbonyl atom trans or opposite to the amide of the nitrogen being the reason for restricted movement due to the partial double bond character as can be seen in the slide the rotation is allowed about the nitrogen atom of the peptide bond and the alpha carbon of an amino acid which is denoted by phi bond and the alpha carbon of an amino acid and the carbonyl atom of the amide bond denoted by psi bond The rotation between the carbonyl atom and the nitrogen atom of the peptide bond is restricted. Taking Ramachandran plot a step further, 
We will be discussing about the secondary structure of the protein and how is Ramachandran plot helpful in deducing the secondary structure. A, regularly, a regular secondary structure occurs when each dihedral angle phi and psi remains the same or nearly the same throughout the segment. Means there should be no change in the phi and the psi angles or in the rotation of the uh, bonds. There are a few types of secondary structure that are particularly stable and occur widely in proteins. The most prominent are the alpha helix and the beta conformations and another common type is the beta turn. In principle, phi and psi can have any value between minus 180 and plus 180 degree. As we all know that in a space, if you see the, the space, it is a complete 360 degree uh, angle. So, uh, it can be minus 180 to 180 degree, the phi and psi angles. But many values are prohibited by steric interference between the atoms in the polypeptide bond and the amino acid side chains. Allowed values of phi and psi become evident when psi is plotted versus phi in the Ramachandran plot. It is a well known fact that not all amino acids have an equal propensity to form alpha helices or beta sheets. That is that if a D series is continuous and you introduce a L amino acid that will disrupt the structure or vice versa. Proline is the least found amino acid in the protein secondary structure as it is sterically restricted. The cyclic side chain of proline that contains pyrrolidine side chain limits its phi to the range of minus 60 to plus minus 25 making it the most conformationally restricted amino acid residue in the Ramachandran plot. The formation of alpha helix. The alpha helix is a common occurrence in the protein secondary structure, the right handed alpha helix being the most common form found in the protein structure. Extended left handed alpha helices are theoretically less stable and have not been observed in proteins till now. The alpha helix proved to be the predominant structure in alpha keratins. More generally, about one fourth of all amino acid residues in the proteins are found in alpha helices. The exact fraction varying greatly from one protein to another. The most stable form of alpha helix consisting of D amino acids is left handed. A limitation on the formation of the alpha helix is the presence of proline residues due to its uh, bulky side chains uh, or glycine residues which have the least inclination to form the alpha helices. The reason that proline it does not form or does not get involved in the alpha helices is the nitrogen atom is a part of a rigid ring and rotation about the, the, the nitrogen atom of the peptide bond and the C alpha carbon atom of the peptide bond is not possible. Thus, a proline residue introduces a destabilizing kink in the alpha helix. Glycine occurs infrequently in alpha helices as it has more conformation flexibility than any other amino acid residues. In fact, glycine often occupies positions where a polypeptide backbone makes a sharp turn which with any other residue would be subject to steric interference, favoring the formation of beta sheets more. Formation of beta sheets. The beta conformation organizes the polypeptide chains into sheets. As in the beta conformation, the backbone of the polypeptide chain is extended in a zigzag fashion rather than a helical structure. The arrangement of several segments side by side, all of which are in the beta conformation is called a beta sheet. Glycine and proline residues often occur in the beta turns which is uh, against the alpha helix. In the alpha helix, glycine and proline residues are not favored. The former because it is small and flexible, the latter because peptide bonds involve the amino nitrogen of proline readily assume the cis configuration, a form that is particularly am amenable to a tight turn. That means that the amino group of the, the amino nitrogen of the protein favors a sharp turn as discussed earlier. Beta turns are usually type 1 and type 2 which are found near the surface of a protein where the peptide groups of the central two amino acid residues at the turn can hydrogen bond with water. Coming to the main part of the Ramachandran plot is the interpretation of the alpha helix and the beta sheets on the basis of their dihedral angles. There are different dihedral angles for the alpha helix and the beta sheets.
The alpha helix and the beta conformation are the major repetitive secondary structures in a wide variety of proteins. Although other repetitive structures exist in some specialized proteins, an example is collagen. Every type of secondary structure can be completely described by the dihedral angles phi and psi associated with each residue. As shown by a Ramachandran plot, the dihedral angles that define the alpha helix and the beta conformation fall within a relatively restricted range of sterically allowed structures. Most values of phi and psi taken from known protein structures fall into the expected regions with high concentration of the alpha helix and the beta conformational values. As is evident from this slide, there are different psi and phi values for the secondary structure. As, as can be seen, the negative values of phi and psi can be seen in alpha helix and in beta terms it can be uh, negative, it can be negative or positive or it can be positive and zero degrees. Coming to the next slide, this shows the diagrammatic representation of the Ramachandran plot. The white region shows the disallowed regions which are disallowed due to the steric hindrance of the side chains of the amino acids. The light blue chains, the light blue regions show those regions which are partially allowed by the Ramachandran plot and the dark regions uh, shows the allowed regions which is most, most favorably allowed. We seen the psi degrees have been plotted on the y axis and the phi degrees have been plotted on the x axis. As can be seen there are four quadrants in this Ramachandran plot. If we consider the upper left quadrant, the left quadrant is for the L, amino, L type amino acids and the right quadrant is for the D type amino acids. If we consider the upper left quadrant, it shows the right twisted beta sheets or different types of beta sheets. If we see the lower left quadrant, it shows the right handed alpha helix. If we see the upper right quadrant, that shows the left handed alpha helix. And if we see the fourth lower quadrant, it shows the left handed beta sheets. Let us understand the Ramachandran plot a little, a little bit more by dividing the Ramachandran plot into the four quadrants. So the upper left quadrant is specialized for the right twisted beta sheets with a psi varying from 0 to 180 degree plus 180 degree and phi varying from minus 180 degree to 0 degrees. It shows the area of the right twisted beta sheets. The allowed regions for the beta sheets are phi lies from minus 140 to minus 120 degree always negative and psi being always positive varying from plus 180 to plus 160 degree. So it is safe to conclude that for the beta sheets all the phi is always negative and the psi is always positive. Now coming to the lower left quadrant which is the right hand the, the right handed alpha helix the psi here varies from 0 to minus 180 degree means the psi is always negative and phi varies from minus 180 to 0 degree again that means phi is always negative in this case it shows the area of the right handed alpha helix the allowed region the allowed region for the alpha helix are the the phi lies from minus 130 to minus 60 degree always negative and psi being always negative again varying from minus 30 to minus 60 degree. Now coming to the upper right quadrant the phi and psi values are always positive. It shows the area of the left handed alpha helix. The allowed regions for the alpha helix are phi with a value of minus plus 50 degrees to 65 degrees always positive and again psi being always positive from varying from plus 30 to 100 degrees always in a positive side. The lower right quadrant which is very rare and is not found commonly have, have the phi values as negative and the psi values as positive. It shows the area of the left twisted beta sheets. So now looking at these diagrams you can deduce the psi and phi of the respective sheets or the res respective helices. And one more interesting thing is that the relationship, the left quadrants, upper and the lower, 
both depicts the proteins which are commonly found in our bodies in the left and right quadrants have a diagonal relationship that means that if you see the right handed alpha helix and the left handed alpha helix there is a diagonal relationship and if you see the left handed beta sheets and the right handed beta sheets there is a diagonal relationship if you look at the question number 2 from the csi in its previous years you can see that there is a question on the values of phi and psi and you can easily deduce this from the explanation that I have given given to you and I hope that you may answer all the questions from this uh, from, from the previous years as I have elaborated each and everything very clearly. Thank you very much and subscribe to Molecule. Thank you very much. Please like, share and subscribe.